Hi, my name is Jim Keenan, and uh, children, I'm going to tell you what it was like back in the day, the days of early Yapsies. Laptops were expensive. This was before Apple introduced the iBook and the PowerBook, and many people came to Yapsie without laptops, myself included. So the organizers of Yapsies in 99, 2000, 2001 at least, had to compensate in the various rooms that would take, uh, in which lectures would take place, they would usually set up a Windows laptop, a Windows desktop computer, so that people could connect to the internet as part of their talks. They had to set up computer labs or use the campus computer labs for hacking sessions. Uh, and I used that at, uh, at Buffalo, in, in Europe, uh, and in Montreal in 2001. And they also had to make available overhead projectors so the people who were presenting talks but did not have laptops could present slides by the 1960s technology of overhead projectors. And that's how I presented my first lightning talk, which is why there are no slides today. So at that time, uh, I started learning Perl, I guess, in early 2000, and a lot of my learning came from subscribing to two mailing lists, the Perl Win32 users list at activestate.com and Perl beginners at yahoogroups.com, each of which I subscribed to in digest form. Now, there came a time in the spring of 2000 when, for some reason, the active state lists went offline for a while, and when they returned, their archives were not available. And this very fr frustrated me, and so I began to write a Perl program to deal with my frustration. I wrote a program to de-archive the Daily Digest files. This subsequently uh, evolved into a CPAN module called Mail Digest Tools, which you all remember from my talk on this subject at Yapsi Buffalo in 2004 but I don't recommend you use that module. But eventually, I built up uh, on my, uh, uh, my Windows desktop at home uh, 4,000 files, one for each mailing list thread containing over 12,000 postings from the two mailing lists. And I was very proud of this program. And I asked myself, well, what good is this program? Well, in the two weeks prior to Yapsi NA Montreal in 2001, I was able to conduct an interesting bit of research about the Perl community itself by using my archive of those 4,000 thread files containing over 12,000 postings from the two digests. And in late May of 2001, Casey West wrote an article on Perl.com called Turning the Tide on Perl's Attitude Toward Beginners. And he wrote that the Perl community has held tight to a zero tolerance policy for beginners. He cited the hostile attitude beginners face when, uh, let me, when inadvertently posing questions that have been asked before only to be flamed and order to go RTFM. Well, I wondered whether the problem West described might be found in some parts of the community, but not in others. The two Perl mailing lists to which I subscribed are remarkably, were remarkably flame-free, and I had never personally experienced hostility when posting to them. I hypothesized that a crude measure of a particular mailing list's incivility would be how frequently RTFM appeared on postings to the list. With my archives, I was able to test this hypothesis. I wrote a Perl program which located each instance of RT, RTFM and, ex, and extracted the offending line of text. I then eyeballed the data to eliminate cases where RTFM was quoted in the reply to a message. This left only original uses of RTFM in posting to these lists. Thus, an index of a particular mailing list's incivility. The results. By this crude measure, the tone of the discussion on these two Perl mailing lists appeared remarkably civil. RTFM appeared in fewer than 1% of all postings. Now, like Casey West, Casey, TPC is in Pittsburgh, where are you? 
Like Casey, you may feel that other parts of the Pearl community are or were in 2001 hostile to beginners, but in certain corners, civility rules. Thank you.